want to start with a problem that we've been looking at and trying to use airplanes to help on. So as you may or may not know, um, sea level rise uh, is one of the big impacts of, uh, of global warming. And the biggest uncertainty in sea level rise is the, um, basically the stability of the Antarctic ice sheets. Um, if they slip out off the Antarctic, they'll basically increase the sea level rise forecast in the, in the U.S. And by 2100 uh, by about a meter. The impact of that is, and you can see on the plot in the lower right, is uh, that most of Cambridge would be flooded. Okay, where we are right now would be flooded. Um, and it's a huge uh, source of uncertainty. Now, um, get a little bit, and by the way, um, I'm collaborating with a bunch of people on this. This shows you sort of the flow of ice in Antarctica and the flow coming off the glaciers. <coughs> um, and right now, those flows are being actually blocked by um, <coughs> ice sheets, which are blocking the glaciers from coming out, okay? Um, there's a number of them. And so you look carefully at this plot, you can see the, the red areas are actually areas where the flow is coming out. In the blue is where it's being blocked. You can see little red lines. Those are ice sheets that are blocking the flow. If they break out, break up, and they are breaking up, and the rate of their breakup will control when that ice slips off and when sea level rise will really be, become significant. Um, this just shows you a picture of the ice sh uh, shelves breaking off the thing. And when you look at these images, okay, you'll notice that they're kind of um, flashing. That's because we only get an observation in the Antarctic about once a week. Because of the satellite architecture, we're doing it with satellites, this is one of the hardest places in the world to go and make a measurement. In the Details of the mechanisms of the breakup are not actually very well understood. As I said, it's really hard to get there. If you fly an airplane there, you only have a few hours on station. And one of my collaborators, Brent Minchow, has been working this problem for years. Now, it turns out that we, by another path, were working on something which was effectively a way to get this measurement. So students at, at MIT, and in collaboration with a couple of other universities, including Technical University of Lisbon, uh, as a sort of aircraft design project, we're developing a solar electric airplane to make observations of, of climate change systems. Now, if you know much about solar airplanes, they're actually really hard to do, they're, um, because they're, if you look at these pictures, that it's very big and, and sort of long wingspan. When you get to, in order to make it light enough to get to the altitude, um, that you really need to, the airplane gets sort of very fragile, okay, and to get it up there. So the reason why we need to be in the stratosphere is we need to be above the, the fast um, winds. This is a solar electric airplane. It recharges during the day, okay, and you need a battery to get through the night. Now, people have tried to do this. Almost all of the airplanes that have been developed have actually come apart and broken up because in order to get the airplane to carry the batteries to get through the night is a really hard thing to do, okay? By the time you, get, you, you have a lot of batteries, the airplane gets bigger. These airplanes are typically three or, or 350-foot wingspans. One of the things the students realize is if you focus on the summer months, which, by the way, is when many of the climate change phenomena, and particularly this one we're looking at in Antarctic, it turns out the airplane gets very easy because there's not much of a night in the Antarctic, okay? So uh, we, if you, this is sort of a plot the students did on optimizing that. So um, we're, we've actually, in collaboration with Brent, developed the instrumentation for this airplane. Uh, we're focused on the mission. Um, and over last summer, a group of students in collaboration with a company called Electra.Aero developed the prototype airplane. So this is the structural prototype of the airplane. It had its first flight in August. So um, we're, we're now in the process of, of basically expanding this airplane, getting it up first to the uh, stratosphere, and then from the stratosphere, we'll actually go to Antarctic and make the measurements. So thank you.